Hey there guys, so today's video is going to be on this skirt that you see before you. Uh, it's actually a full circle skirt made from bed sheets that I thrifted from the op shop. I found these sheets and thought that they were adorable. So I decided it was high time I made a tutorial on how to make a full circle skirt. It is a pretty requested video of mine. The first thing you'll need to do is get a bit of ribbon and tie that around your waist and your waist is the narrowest part of your torso. So smallest part of your torso, um, generally an inch above your belly button. Then you want to measure your waist where we've taped the ribbon and write that measurement down. You then want to figure out how long you want your skirt to be. So measuring down from our ribbon again, using that as our anchor, uh, yeah, just basically decide how long or how short you want the skirt to be. I always measure it and then flip the tape over and hang it down and just see how short it actually is going to be. Then you will need a large bit of paper to trace our skirt pattern and a large round object like this tin. Now halving your waist measurement and then using a tin, a round tin or a round shape, trace the round shape off onto your paper and then make sure that that half circle is half of your waist measurement. You then want to draw lines going straight out. I hope this makes sense. Hopefully this picture makes sense. And then measuring from our waist seam down to our hem, just making sure that that is all the same measurement. I hope that made sense. If it doesn't, just pause it and um, go back and have a look. Uh, yes, yeah, so these are the sheets that I am showing you guys. Uh, it actually came with a pillowcase, which had a cute little extra detailing on it. Um, and I also decided that I would use the uh, ruffle or the trim um, on the edge of the cuff of the bed. I thought I, that I would incorporate this into the skirt. As you can see here, I'm, I'm deciding what, what I'm going to do. Um, I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. Um, yes, playing with some sheets. Come on, we all do it, right? Now, because I'm going to use my trim, I need to save it from the fabric. So... You can see where the trim ends, but I want to add about an inch up from that. I've only allowed about a centimetre. Make sure that you allow more, um, otherwise it gets really tricky when we try and overlock it off. So don't do what I did. Don't just cut off a centimetre. Allow something like 2.5 centimetres, so an inch. Um, if you're not using sheets, then skip this step. Like if you're just using fabric, then ignore what I'm saying now. But yeah, if you are using bed sheets that have a trim that you want to save, make sure that you... Um, cut two centimeters so fold our fabric in half and place our pattern along the fold on the piece of fabric then simply cut out the pattern that we've got here as you can see making sure that we've got that one centimeter seam allowance at our um, at our edges you can see there where that where that line is um, then cut out that little circular half moon section um, that is where our waist is going to go, obviously, and then carefully, watch what I'm doing here, we want to split one seam open, so I'm cutting down one side, then this turns into our centre back seam. Make sure you don't cut down both sides, you just want to cut down one, as you can see here. So it's like, yeah, looks like that, basically. Uh, then you want to work out what you want your waistband measurement to be. So I decided I would go for a finish to four centimeters. So with seam allowance, that is five centimeters, double that. So that's 10. So 10 centimeters wide and then make sure it's the same length as that full waist measurement plus uh, the two centimeters seam allowance that we allow for at the side. Then you want to get your, oh sorry, this is on just like uh, baking paper. So you can use whatever kind of paper you've got. You can use newspaper if you've got it lying around, if that's all you've got. Then you want to lay it down onto our fabric. Now I decided to do a contrast here and uh, use the other side of the bed sheet. So the different floral print that will um, mirror the floral trim at the hem. So yep, cut out your waistband and then take it over to your iron, fold it in half and give it a really good press as you can see that I have done here. This is what it looks like folded in half and then open back out. Um, then once you've done that I'm assuming I'm going to take you, no I'm not, okay. Then we're going on to the trim. Now make sure that you trim out the excess overlocking that will be, hopefully it's overlocked, if, if the sheets are made well they'll be overlocking. Um, make sure you trim out the overlocking in between there. Don't get rid of the seam allowance, just 
oh, that's kind of a bit complicated, but um, don't throw away the seam allowance. Just open it up and get rid of that leftover uh, overlocking. It's just going to be really bulky for our seam. Then you want to overlock our waistband, uh, so along the bottom and then down each side. This just will ensure that it won't fray. If you don't have an overlocker, you can always do a large zigzag stitch on your sewing machine. Then I am going to overlock my set of back seams separately. Um, my waist seam and then my hem. Now I always say this you don't have to use a fancy schmancy overlocker I just use this overlocker every day so therefore um, I kind of I kind of need one um, but yeah if you don't have an overlocker just hop onto your sewing machine and on a wide zigzag um, so like a four or a six um, just run down that seam. I'll actually show you guys a little bit later on how I um, overlocked my actually I'm about to get to that soon so sorry guys I'm all over the place can you tell it's quite late at night right now um, but I just want to get this video up because I don't like leaving these videos unedited for ages um, so yeah then overlock your trim but like I said if you don't have an overlocker just hop on your sewing machine like I am here and that is what um, zigzag stitch looks like instead of overlocking thread. Okay, so now we want to lay our waistband onto uh, the, the waist part of our skirt and we want to pin that down. Um, I've allowed for a centimetre seam allowance um, but you guys can allow for more. I wouldn't advise to allow for less just because if you guys make a mistake you want to make sure you've got a little bit of ease. So that is our centre back seam there to the left and then epic fail here. I forgot to move the camera um, initially, but we are using our foot as a guide. See how I've got the right hand side of my sewing machine foot um, running really close to the edge of um, the fabric? That is just the guide that we're going to use. So I don't have to measure it, I can just use my eye along the foot and know that it's a centimetre in from the seam allowance. Um, then we want to measure and pin our zip in place. So this is just a really easy way, just line up your centre back seam, lay your zip down and then throw a pin in where you know the zip is going to end. Hop on your machine and I always add like a 2 centimetre or 1.5 centimetre um, seam allowance at the centre back just in case if you're out just that little bit. Um, then we want to hide the tabs at the top of our zip. So, um, yep, folding them down, we're just going to hop back on the machine and get rid of them. If you don't, they kind of stick out the top of the skirt and it doesn't really look that pretty. So, yeah, make sure you don't skip this step, otherwise you'll have... Well, I guess you could just cut them off, but then they'll fray. So, it's always better to just flip it over and stitch it. Um, okay, so now comes the semi-tricky part. I've shown you guys many times how to put a zip in but I just like to keep including it in each video just in case if you're new. Hi if you're new, thank you for watching. Um, this is a really easy way to put a zip in. So yep, starting at one side you just want to flip over your centre back seam by oh, let's just go one centimetre and then pin down without the zip and then once you've pinned down that side you grab the zip and place it exactly where you want it behind and then use those pins that are already in place and pin the zip in place, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. Uh, so yeah, just use the edge of the folded fabric as a guide. You don't really want the teeth of the zipper to be sticking too far out. Like we don't want to be seeing too much or we don't want to be seeing too little. Um, you just want it to just hide the edge of the teeth. So this is what it should look like. Make sure that the top of your zip head lines up that's really important then grab a zipper foot which looks like this and making sure you move the needle over to the right because if you don't you will break it straight away it will smash into the metal um, using a zipper foot just run down the side of the zip now you don't have to use a zipper foot um, you only really need to use a zipper foot when you're doing an invisible zip which this most definitely is not um, so yeah, it just comes down to, down to personal preference. I like using a zipper foot, but you most definitely don't have to. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything that I have missed describing. Um, I guess maybe I'll just be quiet. But, and then yeah, this is always a little bit tricky. Once you get all the way down to the bottom and the zip's open, you have to put the needle in, lift the foot, and then zip the zipper up 
and then place the foot back down and finish stitching. And then we spin it round and make sure you back stitch, don't forget that, um, and stitch up the other side. So just repeat the process down the other side. And that is a really easy way to put a zip in. Um, what am I doing? Finally, okay, yes, now we are attaching our trim. So good side to good side. I allowed a 1.5 centimeter, no, it looks like two centimeter. I think I allowed a two centimeter hem to my skirt. Just pin our trim on and then once you've pinned the trim on all the way around the hem, you'll get to the center back and you'll need to sew the trim together, the little roughly trim. So yep, just overlock that off and make sure that it is a perfect length and then you may have a bit of trouble stitching over the piping here so just persevere and take your time and be really careful because you don't want the needle to snap and smash into your eyes so I sometimes advise to take it really slowly over thick bits and use your hand and hand wind over that's what I did I had to stop and hand wind over it um, but yeah that is pretty much it and then I'm just folding out the seam here and making sure that it's all gonna lie flat and then using my zipper foot because there was binding involved which made it really bulky and hard to stitch with a normal foot so yep using my zipper foot I stitched the ruffle hem to the hem of the actual dress by dress I mean skirt um, so this is the final product all finished and I am super happy with how it turned out. I've worn it out a couple of times and I've had quite a few compliments about it. Um, twirling my heart out. Yes, and I paired it with some ruffle socks and some shoes that I thrifted. Oh, side note, I'm just about to film a tutorial, well not tonight but tomorrow, uh, on how to turn cork wedge heels into um, velvet pumps. So if you like velvet like I do, then keep your eye out for that video. I paired it with this hideously adorable pom-pom jumper, but of course you by all means definitely do not. And I also wore it with um, red velvet lip butters, which have finally arrived in Australia. I'm so excited. Revlon has finally brought them out. Um, so thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, keep your eye out for that next video if you guys are at all interested in shoe tutorials. Um, if you guys want to follow me on Instagram, I post a bunch of videos. And by videos, I mean pictures. What is with me and words tonight? Um, so yeah, if you guys want to see some sneak peeks or just things that I'm up to, then you should follow me there. I am at Pepperminty Milk, same as Twitter. So I hope you guys are happy and well, and I will see you in my next tutorial. Tutorial. Good night or good morning, depending on where you live in the world. Bye.